on Facebook. Invite our Facebook crowd to come on in. Praise God. We don't want to forget them now. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Facebook Live family. Coming via Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. We give thanks to you. We give thanks to you for being online. Most of all, we give thanks to God who blessed us, woke us up this morning, started us on a brand new day. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You know, for many of you, uh, weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. We know it's 2017 is on its way out of here. And it's been a blessed year. It's been a challenging year. Many of us have been stretched, stretched more than we've ever been stretched before. But we have learned throughout this whole year that God is real. He will not put on you more than what you can bear. He still supplies all of our needs. The Lord is our strength. He's our light and our salvation. And what a mighty God we serve. And it's so good to be in the land of the living where we can offer up praises unto God. So we welcome you. We welcome you to the Back to Basics Ministries online church. And for the next 45 minutes or so, we want you to worship with us and um, be a blessing, uh, not only to one another, but to others as they watch the video at a later time. We thank God. God is moving by his spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, God is moving by his spirit. And we pray that you'll get into the flow and see what the Holy Ghost is doing and let the Holy Ghost have his way. He is working in this world. He's working in this nation. And we pray, ladies and gentlemen, that if you're listening in today, live or via the video, that if you're not saved, make it your purpose to get saved today. What do you mean by get saved, Pastor Carter? By getting saved, we mean give your heart totally to Jesus Christ and receive him to be your Savior, your Lord, and your God. Well, Pastor Carter, how can I do this? How can I get saved? I go to church. I've been baptized. I've been going to church all my life. Well, if you're not saved, going to church won't help you. All that time you put in going to church, attending church, teaching Sunday school, singing in the choir, working on the usher board, slaving in the kitchen, plucking chickens, cooking dinners, selling dinners, raising money. That won't mean a thing if you're not born again. And the Bible teaches us that you can be born again. You must be born again. The scripture says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, it's so easy. Commit your life to the Lord. And when you commit your life to him, you're making a lifelong commitment. You're making a holy vow before God, the angels, and, and the heavenly hosts. And God is going to hold you to that. God does not want you to make a mouth, a verbal commitment, but commit your heart to him, your life. Let him come and change you. Let the Holy Spirit change you. As you study the word of God, as you worship, as you fellowship, as you hear the word of God, as you purpose in your heart that I'm going to live for a Jesus, you watch how God will live for you. And so we greet you in the name of Jesus. We greet all, all of our friends throughout America. We greet all of our friends throughout Europe, Asia, Africa, all over the world. We greet our friends on the YouTube channel, the Facebook channel, we bless God and thank God for the social media and for the opportunity to bring the word of God into your home, wherever you are. We give the praise to God. We give the glory and the honor. Thank God for our little studio here. Thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we thank God for you. We want to thank you for your support for this ministry. We want to thank you and uh, 
I'm, I'm thinking of certain people who've sent donations to the ministry this past year. You have supported us not only with your financial gifts, but with your prayers and your love. And we pray that God will meet every need that you have and that as you enter into 2018, you will go by faith, not by sight. Ladies and gentlemen, we walk by faith and not by sight. Because if you take a look at what's ahead of us in 2018 and looking at 2017 and transitioning to 2018, many of you don't want to go forward. We have a message for you today, a message of faith and hope that you can go forward. You must go forward. You will go forward. And so we bless God and thank God. Praise God. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we come to you this day in the name of Jesus, and we worship you and bless you. We lift up holy hands unto you, Father. We thank you. Lord God, you are God of all, the God of the whole universe. Universe, You made us. You made us for the purpose of worshiping you. And so we set our hearts on worshiping you in the name of Jesus, in the Holy Spirit. And God, we ask that you'll bless each listener, each participant in this ministry, everyone who watches the video, everyone on live, bless the Facebook family, the YouTube family, people all over the world, meet every need. Lord God, stretch forth your mighty hand and heal the sick, deliver those who are bound, give jobs to the unemployed, homes to the homeless. Oh, Father, deliver those who have to face operations, deliver those living in fear, Many have lost loved ones. Bring comfort to the bereaved. Father God, we just trust you. We bless you. We honor you. And thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you that you brought us through another year with the online church. Thank you for the many people whose lives you've touched, the many people whom you've changed all over the world. God, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And we pray that you'll forgive us of all of our sins, forgive us of our shortcomings and our iniquities. And Father, we ask that you bless us today. Bless the word that will go forth. Let it not return unto you void or empty. Encourage somebody, Lord. Somebody needs encouragement. And so we trust you, Lord God, and we commit this service to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, bless God, bless God, bless God, bless God. We thank God and we say, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, neighbor, we're going to get ready to get into some word. We've heard a few songs uh, before we started our service and the prayer. And um, we don't play songs during the service because we're not permitted by our hosts, our Facebook or uh, YouTube to play people songs and so I might do a little bit of singing now myself. I mean I mean I might sing a little Andy McBride McBride I might sing a little bit myself. Jen Ryder I might try to sing a few notes myself. Praise God because there's no copyright on my songs. Hallelujah. But we praise God. And and ladies and gentlemen, every one of you ought to have a song in your heart. You ought to have a song some a song of praise unto the Lord that's going to carry you through the day, keep you in times of trouble. Like in the time of trouble, the Lord will hide me and or wait on the Lord. Like in the time of trouble, the Lord will hide me. That's a song we sing that uh there, uh, Jen Ryder says, there's no copyright in heaven, so we can sing these songs. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on him. Wait on the Lord. Don't try to get ahead of God. Wait on him and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen and he 
will strengthen thine heart. That's one of the songs I sing around here quite often. When, when Satan's trying to bombard my life, trying to destroy the ministry, uh, messing against people, and people need prayer, people are hurting, and we've got to encourage them. We've got to deal with our own problems. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And as ministers, Jen Ryder, we've got to be able to meet other people's needs by praying for them and, and blessing them no matter what's going on and at the same time keep our heads above water. That's why we have to wait on the Lord and trust in him. Ladies and gentlemen, this Christian walk is not a cakewalk. It's not a piece of cake. It's not a piece of cherry pie. There's a war going on. We're in battle every day. Satan is trying with all of his might to destroy you, to destroy me, to destroy your household, to destroy this nation, to destroy the nations. And there's a war going on 24 seven. And on the horizon, we're looking at a real world war about to take place. And we've got to dig in, ladies and gentlemen. You can't cave in now. You've got to know where to get the strength because if you don't have the strength to go on, you will cave in. Satan wants you to cave in. He wants your ministry to cave in. He wants your marriage to cave in. He wants your household to cave in. Satan wants you to die. He wants to kill you. He wants you to kill somebody else. And so you need the Lord in your life. And so get a song, get a song, get a repertoire. Don't worry about copyrights. Sing those songs, sing those praises unto the Lord. When trouble comes upon you during the day, sing a song, sing a song, sing a song. Lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. When your body's racked with pain, sing a praise song unto the Lord. Sing a song of victory when you're broke, busted, and disgusted. Sing a song of praise to the Lord. Sing a song of victory. I believe this is going to help somebody. And when you start singing, Satan can't deal with it. He can't deal with it. When the devil puts on you everything he has and you keep on singing, you keep on singing, he can't deal with it. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, resist the devil. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. The Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord, take up your weapons and flee, for the Lord has given me authority to walk all over the sing a song ladies and gentlemen don't just sit there and cry don't you be a wimp stop wimping sing a song open your big mouth and sing something even if you can't carry a tune sing it anyhow the holy ghost will help you to take your song to the lord the bible says that our prayers our praise and our worship are carried by the holy ghost into the nostrils of god as a sweet smelling incense or fragrance. So sing a song, sing a song, praise God. You get laid off on your job, get fired on your job, sing a song. When, when the bill collectors call, they're gonna cut off your electricity, sing a song, praise God. You don't have enough food for tomorrow, sing a song. You're about to lose your home, sing a song. The doctor gives you a bad report, sing a song. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. If God be God, serve him. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to make up in your mind right now on this last day of the year, as we get ready to enter a new year, you've got to make up your mind which way you're going in 2018. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. No matter what comes against us, we will serve the Lord. He didn't bring us this far. Oh, I know God is helping somebody. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. Come on, somebody. I don't believe he brought us this far to leave us. 
So when the enemy comes upon you like a flood, the Holy Ghost will raise up a standard against him. But the Holy Ghost is looking for your faith, your trust in God. So sing a song, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We've come through many dangers, toils and snares. Andy Mack, this has not been a good year for a lot of people. Many have suffered, many have hurt, many have lost a lot of stuff, but bless God, we're still here. Hallelujah. We're still here. We're still here. We're like, oh, we're like, uh, uh, we're like uh, in the color purple, in the color purple when Whoopi Goldberg played that part and she is about to leave the farm, leave the plantation. She pointed to her nasty, evil husband, and she said, I may be black, I may be ugly, but I'm here. <laughs> I may be black, I may be ugly, but I'm here. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, doesn't matter what color you are, and you're all beautiful. The fact is, you are here. God has kept us for this time. God has kept us for this time. Ladies and gentlemen, just might be that God has planted you in the kingdom of God for a time like this. So don't be afraid. Be of good courage. Oh, be of good courage. Praise God. Be of good courage. I'm going to talk about a man who was of good courage. I'm going to talk in a few minutes about a man who faced so much adversity and how he gave us an example. He's a role model of one who suffered much for the kingdom of God, and he put his total trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at the Apostle Paul. Turn with me to Philippians 3 or download the third chapter of the book of Philippians, and we're going to look at a message today called keep on pressing on keep on pressing on mm. it's gonna get good it's gonna good we ain't got started yet it's gonna get good i know i only have about 15 more minutes but it's gonna get good and i especially i especially invite those of you who are in battles going through difficulty going through troubles you're being oppressed you're being tormented by the enemy. I invite you to listen to this word today. And I double dare you, I double dog dare you to trust the Holy Spirit to deliver you. I say I double dog dare you. I put a chip on my shoulder, a chip of wood. I double dog dare you to smack it off. I double dog dare you to trust the Lord Jesus and see what he will do in your situation. There's no situation God cannot handle. There's no problem so big that he cannot solve it. I believe somebody's getting fired up today. I believe somebody's getting fired up today. Fire them up, Holy Ghost. Open their eyes, Lord God. Lift up the heads that are cast down and hear the word of the Lord and put your trust in the Lord. Praise God. Let's look at Philippians chapter three. And we want to go back to Verse four, I'm going to read several verses. We're looking at Paul. This man suffered so much for Jesus and he did not have to suffer. By the standards of the world, he was successful. But look at what he says about it. Starting with verse four, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he have whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Paul says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law, I was a Pharisee. He says, concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. He says, touching the righteousness which is in the law, I was blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I count it loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered 
the loss of all things. Paul says he has suffered the loss of all things. His dignity, his standing in the community, all his credentials, all the great things he had accomplished before coming to Christ. He said he suffered them as loss for Christ Jesus. And I count them but dung. Dung, D-U-N-G. Dung, manure, that I might win Christ. Paul said all these things I accomplished in this life, they don't mean a thing to me. I, I give them all up. I've lost them all for the sake of following Jesus Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And then let's look at this 10th verse and, and go on a few more verses. We're in Philippians chapter 3, ladies and gentlemen, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Paul says, I'm suffering all these things that I might know Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are suffering. You don't know what's going on. You don't know why it's going on. You wish it would stop. But God has a plan for you, ladies and gentlemen. He has a plan for you, just like he had a plan for Job. Job suffered so much, and so many others suffered so much for God. God's got the plan, ladies and gentlemen. And so Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, churches are full of people today. They've been going to church all their life. Some go two times on a Sunday, maybe three times. Still, they're sad, they're broke, busted, disgusted, disillusioned. They don't have any joy. They lack the joy of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, some people are sitting up in dead fellowships, hearing dead sermons. Nothing goes in and naturally nothing goes out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the way God intends it to be. The preaching of the gospel ought to change people's lives. If you're going to church or if you're on the online church, you ought to come with an expectation that your life is going to change and that you have no power to change it at all. But it is the Holy Ghost who will do the changing. And ladies and gentlemen, you've got to have the conviction, the commitment that whatever way God chooses to change you, it is all right with him and with you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's sickening the number of people who think that attending church is going to get them saved. Attending church is going to get them brownie points. Sucking up to the pastor, sucking up to the bishop, that is not going to get you over, ladies and gentlemen. It's not in church attendance. It's not in righteous works. Is your heart yielded to the Lord God? Ladies and gentlemen, it is so sickening to see the number of people who call themselves Christians. They're excited when things are going well, but when things don't go well, the first thing they do is withdraw from the church. The first thing they do is stop attending church. The first thing they do is withdraw from the very source of power where God can speak to them. The first thing they do is stop praying, stop fellowshipping, stop worshiping, stop believing in God. And that's Satan's strategy. He wants to remove you from the presence of God. Satan has been so effective 
in dividing the church, in dividing God's people. But you're hearing the word today. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Paul is our example. He sets the stage. Not only does he talk the talk, but he walks the walk. He said, by these worldly standards, I was somebody. I had it made in a shade. I was rich. I was powerful. I was a Pharisee. I was a Jew among Jews, a Hebrew, circumcised the eighth day. I had all the credentials of success. But these things don't mean a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you grand poo-poos and kahunas sitting up in churches thinking you're somebody. Some of you preachers all puffed up thinking the people are, are tools and implements at your will. Some of you ladies in your big fine hats and fine dresses and jewelry uh, think you've got something. Some of you folks who've got these degrees, these don't mean a thing to God, ladies and gentlemen. Paul said, I count it all as dung. Don't let the devil deceive you into thinking you're somebody that you're not. Ladies and gentlemen, your degrees cannot take you to heaven. Your money cannot take you to heaven. Your associations cannot take you to heaven. Your political relationships cannot take you to heaven. You must be born again. You can attend church. You can be the pastor of the church. You can be the first lady. You can be the bishop of many churches. But if you're not born again, you're going to die and bust hell wide open and burn forever and ever. I'm not preaching condemnation. I'm preaching the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, stop letting Satan deceive you just because you can scratch two nickels together or, or put $25 together or can pay your electric bill. Don't you look down on that person who doesn't have a home. Don't you look down on that person who doesn't have two pieces of bacon to put between a slice, two, a slice of bread. Don't you look down on them because you were able to graduate from the university or you married into money. Ladies and gentlemen, these things don't mean a thing if you're not born again. Don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let him deceive you. You must be born again. I know some of you get tired. If you don't want, don't want to hear preaching. You want to hear that stuff that tickles your ears. You want a pastor to stroke you, smoke you, tell you how fine you are, how good you are. But ladies and gentlemen, that will not get you into heaven. Wake up and smell the coffee while I take a sip. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, God is serious. He has laid the plan out before us. Walk in his plan. Walk in his will. Wait on the Lord. If you don't know what his will is, pray. Study your word. God will reveal his plans to you. He said in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. God knows the plans. But if you're, uh, if you're content sitting up in First Baptist, taking notes, well, Pastor so-and-so uh, reads his dissertation. If you're content uh, sitting up in Second Baptist and watching all your friends smile at you because you made it to another service, if that contents you, if you're happy with that, then you're content with it. But I'm saying that ain't going to get you into heaven. The accolades of friends and the support of friends will not get you into heaven. To be politically correct, because you go to a certain church, and, and you do that because you want to find favor in the community or with people, that is not going to get you into heaven. Satan has you to see. He doesn't have to afflict you. He doesn't have to bother you. He's already got you. And then some of you, you get sick. You lose your money. You lose your job. Your car breaks down. And then you think God doesn't care about you. The first thing you do is quit God. That's deception. It's deception from the devil. The devil's full of tricks. He'll use anything he can to try to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. 
And the sad thing is I know many, many people who bought into that. People go to church, they're bitter, they're angry with God, but you still keep going because your your church, you're, you're married to the congregation. You're married to the building. You're married to that group of people. You want to look good in front of a group of people. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not going to get you into heaven. You must be born again. Some of you need to leave some of those folks who have you enslaved. You're captive to their will. They've been manipulating you for 25, 30 years. And you think because you please them and appease them, you're going to heaven. You need to please God. Oh, Pastor Carter, the anointing is on me today, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, ladies and gentlemen. So many people are leaving this year broke, busted, disgusted, frustrated, angry, mad at God, disappointed. Because Satan has deluded you. He has messed up your mind. He's got you uh, fixing your eyes on idols and things that are not of God. Your eyes are on material stuff. What your neighbors have. Get your home fixed up. Get your home redecorated. Get a new car. You're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You need to keep up with Jesus. I'd rather have nothing plus Jesus than to have the whole world without Jesus. Paul said, I count all these things as dung. I had it all, he said. By the uh, credentials of this society, I was successful, but I was lost in sin. He said, I count it all dung. Then he said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Paul said, I've been, I've been through a whole lot for the sake of Jesus Christ. Some of you can't even go through, press your way through a common cold. You get a cold and you stop going to church. You get a cold and you stop worshiping God. You get a headache and you stop reading your Bible. You get a toothache and you stop praying. Satan doesn't worry about you. He knows that he's got you. Some of you, you get a couple extra dollars, you hit the lottery, somebody give you a couple hundred dollars, and you're so happy, you're praising God. Oh, thank Jesus. Praising God is not because of stuff. Praising God is when you get up in the morning, and you got to figure out how you're going to feed your kids, where you're going to go to find a job, where you're going to go to get a place to live. Praising God is if you don't get the answer today, you're going to say hallelujah anyhow. Praising God is looking at the devil and say, yeah, uh-huh, I took your best shot, but I still love the Lord. Praising God means I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God. That's what we're talking about. That's the kind of person God is looking for. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. God's eyes are looking, ladies and gentlemen. He sees you. He knows what you need. He knows what you're going through. And the devil saying to you, see, God has forgotten you. You may as well die. You may as well put the gun to your head. You may as well give it up. You may as well drink poison. Satan, you're a liar. The Lord rebuke you. People stop listening to the devil's voice. The Bible says, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand. And having done all, stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, taking the helmet of salvation, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, take the shield of faith where you can, wherewith you can quench all the fiery darts, all the lies, all the accusations of the devil and pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That's what we ought to be doing, ladies and gentlemen. And that's more than attending church. Come on, somebody. We're preaching today. We're preaching today. We're preaching what's going to get you saved, what's going to get you over, what's going to take you into 2018 and what's going to take you through successfully because the devil is waiting 
to destroy you. He wants to separate you. He knows what trick to use. He knows what bell to ring. He knows what rope to tug. But you've got to get ready. That's why we say, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. The scripture says, though war should rise against me, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. If I wake up in the morning and we're in war, I'm not going to be afraid. I was telling Jackie last night, Jackie, we're heading to war in 2018. America's heading to war. I said, but we are not going to be afraid because our trust is in the Lord. So Paul says, not as though I had already attained. He said, I've accomplished a lot. I've attained a lot, but these things don't mean a thing. I've given them all up for Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul writes this letter. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and stretching toward all those things that are ahead, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan put so much on Paul, tried to destroy him. And this letter that Paul writes to encourage people in his day and this letter is encouraging people all over the world the word of God has not lost its power this letter to the Philippians is strengthening people in Africa Asia Europe America all over the world when people read this word they are strengthened by the Holy Spirit but if you're sitting up in church and you don't read your Bible you listen to anything coming out the pastor's mouth, and much of it, some much of it sometimes don't amount to nothing. If you're not willing to make a change, if you're not willing to invest in your own soul and seek God, God, where do you want me to be? What do you want me to be? Then you'll fall for the okie doke and you'll be deceived. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about millions of Christians today. Mm -hmm. Many who are so gripped in fear and paralyzed by the devil that they are afraid to take a leap of faith and change. I invite people every day, join me on the online church. You know, there are so many people who could get delivered, who could get set free by listening to the online church, uh, not just because of me, not, but not just because of Paul Begley, not because of these powerful, anointed online ministers who have sold out to Jesus Christ, but because of the Holy Ghost doing a new thing. It's a new paradigm for the church, ladies and gentlemen, but people are still stuck on stubborn. They would rather go down with their church. I'm going down with First Baptist. That was my mama's church. My daddy laid the concrete floor. My mama bought the first pew. I'm going to sit here and they're sitting there and they're gagging and they're dying. They won't let the Holy Ghost come in. They don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They don't believe in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in casting out demons. They don't believe in laying hands on the sick. Well, what do you believe? As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Well, Pastor Carl, you crazy. Yes, I am. I admit it. I'm so glad you recognize that. I'm so glad that I'm out of my mind. Hallelujah. And I, I'm so glad that I have the mind of Christ in me. Hallelujah. Thank you for reminding me that I have the mind of Christ in me. The scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. A mind to dare to be different. A mind to dare to trust God. A mind to dare to keep on pressing on. Paul and in, in 2 Corinthians gives us a look at all the things he suffered. Uh, two nights he had to swim in the Mediterranean because of shipwreck. He was beaten on two occasions, left to die. He was stoned to uh, nearly to death. He was starved. He spent nights in the desert when it was severely cold, days when it was uh, so hot he could barely stand it. 
They try to starve him out. They beat him. They put him in jail, cast him in prison. And ladies and gentlemen, at the time of this writing of Philippians, the Apostle Paul, who gives us so much encouragement today, at the time of this writing, he's waiting to be beheaded in a Roman prison cell. That's love. He was waiting to be beheaded by an axe that would chop his head off. And while he was waiting to be executed, he decided to write this letter to encourage believers wherever they were. And some of you can't even write a Christmas card or send a note to somebody sick or text somebody who's going through or go on Facebook and encourage someone who's bereaved. It's sad, ladies and gentlemen. You need to wake up. You need to wake up and get filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to wake up and repent. Ladies and gentlemen, there should be repentance all over the world and repentance ought to start in the church. We ought to repent for our wicked ways for our stubborn sophistication, for our pride, our rebellion against God. And so many of us think we know everything. Nobody can teach you anything. You need to repent and humble yourself before the hand of God. Paul said, all this stuff that I accomplished in my life, it doesn't mean a thing. I give it all up for the sake of Jesus Christ. And look at him waiting for the executioner to come to his cell and lead him to the chopping block. What a man. What a man. What a man to take time out from dying to encourage us. And he's a reminder of Jesus Christ who hung, bled, and died on the cross. For you and for me. And he looked down from the cross and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus took time out, ladies and gentlemen. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when one of the dying thieves next to him on the cross, on a cross next to him, said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. At about the midnight hour of his life, Jesus took that man and ushered him into paradise and saved him. So the scripture says, thou art inexcusable, O man. Why go through this life gloating, grumbling, complaining, trying to manipulate folks, trying to accumulate stuff, trying to control people? Why go through your life sitting up in church every Sunday? and not be born again. Why do you stubbornly resist being born again? Do you think God is going to have mercy on you at the midnight hour? Well, he can, but in most cases, you don't know, people don't know when they're going to die. They don't know when the midnight hour. Why spend your life in rebellion against God when God is knocking on your door every day saying, let me in? Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. It's as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. And you know that you know that you know that Jesus is knocking on your door. But you're talking about, but I like my, my, my wine. I like my red wine. I like my reefer. I like smoking my dope. I like our sex. I like committing adultery. Ladies and gentlemen, those things are going to take you to hell. Get saved while you can. Well, I've been saved, Pastor Carter, but it's all right to have a little bit of liquor every now and then. I mean, God don't want me to live a cloistered life. All contrary, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Cast down those vain imaginations. Stop the lying. Stop perpetrating the lies. Do what the word of God says. And if your friends don't like it, your family don't like it, 
It's too bad. I have decided to follow Jesus. What about you? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though no one joined me, still I will follow Jesus. That's my position. I'm at Pascal. Do you think you're so arrogant? No, I am not. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what God has brought me through to bring me to this place. I conclude that I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer lives and can't nobody do me like Jesus. That's just the way I feel about it. Whether you like it or not, that's the way I feel about it. And I have decided I will not let anything or anybody separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. And I intend to walk in love. Mm. And though you hate me, I still love you. I'm not going to carry any grudge. If I were to keep a, a record of all the things people have done to me, I'd be most miserable. I let them go. I count that as all done. I release you. I forgive you. Anybody, anywhere, whether you're living or dead, if you have hurt me, offended me in any way in this life, I forgive you. You will not keep me captive by keeping me angry and bitter and envious and jealous. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Keep on pressing on. Keep on pressing on. Paul says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, I encourage you, forget those things which are behind. Oh, sure, they hurt you. But let it go. 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 No matter what it is. Forgive them. Let it go. Don't harbor any grudges. Don't let any root of bitterness be in your heart. Let it go. Forgive them and walk with the Lord. Stretch every muscle. Strain every muscle, every fiber of your being to follow Jesus, not the church. Don't try to impress the church. Stretch every fiber, every muscle of your being to follow Jesus. Jesus, don't let the church and the church's agenda put you in a little box that you can't see. Jesus, there's much more glory that God has for us if we just open up our eyes and commit our lives to Jesus, not to the church, not to a fellowship, not to a building, not to people. Commit your ways unto the Lord and he will direct your path. Well, praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Mm, mm, mm. I've enjoyed the word today. I've enjoyed the word. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I pray that you'll get this video. Uh, it'll be alive on uh, YouTube later. It'll be back on Facebook later on. It'll be on my website, www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. Go over this message again and again and share it with others. Share it with others and ask God to guide you. Know that you know that you know that you're saved. Commit your life to the Lord. Take the leap of faith. When I was a paratrooper in the Green Berets, I jumped out of a parachute, out of a plane 17 times. Every time I jumped, I took a leap of faith. I didn't know what was out there. Sometimes we jumped at night. I didn't know what was waiting for me. I just, when the jump master said, go, I jumped. Ladies and gentlemen, God is our jump master. He's saying, go. This is 2018. Go. I've got you. Go. Walk by faith and not by sight. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. If I've been a help to you in any way, and if I can help you through prayer, uh, through scripture, uh, through counseling, give me a call, 404-204-205-1101, uh, or hit me up on Facebook or YouTube or 
uh, my email, Leroy Carter 69, Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com. We want you to know Jesus. We want you to know Jesus. Those of you who are uh, on Go to Meet Me, stay online as we stop the recording. Stay online and let's chat.